Hello, this is Prince of Somnia, and I don't think I'm going to freak out on this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. Yeah, I think I was a bit loud last time. I haven't actually edited that video yet at the time of recording, and, uh, heh. <laughs> well, it's going to be entertaining, let's just put it that way. Anyway, there are quite a few trainers on this route that I don't want to fight right now. There's actually going to be quite a few trainers I'm going to be skipping past this episode, so, yeah, because... I'll just tell you right now, we're gonna go into an area with a whole bunch of trainers, and I really don't want to fight all of them on screen. I might just fast forward my way through that instead. So, um, but I do want to fight this trainer, because I think this trainer is a trainer I remember giving me a whole bunch of trouble back in the day. Yep, this is, this is definitely the one. This guy's got a Butterfree, holy crap, and it's level 20, whoa. Yeah, this thing knows, like, all sorts of really irritating status effects, and uh, it's given me quite a bit of trouble back in the day. Just goes to show you that uh, Butterfree is not quite so useless. Ha ha! You got synchronized. Yeah, I just I just wanted to show this guy off. He's someone who can be pretty annoying. It's goes to show you what happens when you have a fully evolved Pokemon on your side. Like I do! <laughs> oh, is the poison gonna finish it off? Ha ha! You basically killed yourself. Ooh, more experience. Level 19. Not bad, not bad. When does Kadabra actually learn Kinesis? It, it, it'll become relevant later, but when does it actually learn Kinesis? I just thought of that. Uh, I think we have to fight both of these guys, so... Oh well. I could have probably skipped past one, but not both. That's what you got, Pidgey. Yeah, I can handle Pidgeys. I'll just fight with the power of my mind. Ha! Nice. Um, yeah, let's just keep going. Poison be damned, we need the experience. Okay, maybe not that bad. I mean, it's too bad Synchronize only triggers when you get the status and not just when you have the status, but I guess it would be broken if that was the case. I guess it's like it needs to be more broken. Yeah, nice. One of my friends has been looking at the Generation 1 uh, tournament tier list. He's kind of been interested, he's interested in like tournament based play. Uh, apparently in Generation 1, even though Psychic types are brokenly overpowered, the number one Pokemon is actually a Psychic type. Go figure. But it, it, it's really just all to do with the way critical hits work in Generation 1. It's like based entirely on your speed stat instead of just being based on like some sort of critical hit ratio or something or other. Uh, well, the Pokemon in question gets the uh, same type of attack bonus off a really, really ridiculously powerful move and a really high chance of critical hit. So. I guess that's why it's considered so good. I'll show off to you later. There's a battle I want to show him off in. And apparently, people want to make a lot of noise in my dorm today. It's Monday! Come on! Save it for the weekend. Yeah, it figures. I go to record, and it's... And, and they're just making noise all the time. I'll be making noise all the time even if I don't go to the court. Level 22, not bad, not bad. We're about... We're about where I want us to be in terms of levels. I, I could stand to go and get more levels with Paulo over there, but... Eh. I'll have plenty of time to train up the Pokemon team. More than enough. There's actually a good... Almost ridiculous amount of experience in the area that you can get. Because you have the root up there, 
you have the area we're about to go to, and you have another route off to the east. So let's talk to this person. She has something I want. The Versus Seeker. I think this is new to this generation. Uh, basically, if you use it, you can rematch trainers. So now you have a really efficient way of level grinding. You can just grind off of trainers instead of grinding off of wild Pokemon, which just aren't as good. And there's the fishing guru. Yeah, I like to fish. No, I don't, actually. In real life, I find fishing to be very boring. But if we lie to him and say we like fishing, we get the old rod. This basically introduces a brand new mechanic in Pokemon. Well, not a brand new mechanic, but a brand new mechanic for this adventure. So let's uh, go into key items. Let's use the old rod. You just wait and get nothing for your weight. Okay, apparently nothing wants to bite today. I want to show this off at least once. There we go. When it has that message of Pokemon's on the hook, you want to press A, and you'll drag out the Pokemon. The old rod can only ever capture, or only ever find one Pokemon. Magikarp. I didn't buy this when you could buy it way earlier, because I figured you could just wait until now and get it for free. Magikarp, on its own, is weak. Almost ridiculously so. Um, actually, and it only ever learns two moves, Tackle and Splash, and Splash does nothing. Absolutely nothing. It never, ever, ever, ever has any effect whatsoever, regardless of all the rumors you must have heard over the years. I don't know why they put in a move that does absolutely nothing, but they did. But. If you can stand to grind your Magikarp all the way up to level 20, it will evolve into the Almighty Gyarados. And by Almighty, I mean maybe not so much Almighty. It's a water flying type, it's actually really really strong, uh, except for the fact that its strength lies in physical attack, and it's a water type, and water types tend to do better with special, not physical. Not to mention, I can't seem to recall very many flying type moves Gyarados can actually learn. Um, it's a pretty good choice, but I honestly think the Nidos are just better if you want something more offensive, even though Gyarados is just stronger outright. Anyway, let's talk to this guy. Oh yeah, and there are much better water types you can get later in the game. Much, much better. So, yeah, just so you know. Oh, really? How long is it going to take for you to build this building? Answer, never. He's never going to build that building. <laughs> Sorry, spoilers, whatever. Uh, there's something else of interest in here, the Pokemon Fan Club. Apparently everyone here is a fan of Pokemon, I guess. Aw, what a cute Pikachu. Wasn't there like a Clefairy in here in Pokemon Yellow version? And if you like interacted with it, your Pikachu would like stare at it with hearts in its eyes or something? And then just stand there while you were in the Pokemon Fan Club? And then if you talk to it, it would be like, Oh my god, I'm in love! But, like, instead of that, it would be like, Pika, 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 Pika! Whatever. Let's just talk to this guy. This guy has something I want. Uh, yeah, I did. Sort of. Anyway, you just listen to this guy ramble on and on and on, you'll get something out of it. The Bike Voucher! So... We can go all the way back to Cerulean City now, and get a bike for free instead of for more money than we can ever hold. So that's pretty nice. If you're playing Generation 1, absolutely, absolutely do this, because in Generation 1, the running shoes don't exist. So if you want to move anywhere at a reasonably fast pace, you're going to need the bike. Although, to be honest, the bike in Generation 1 moves about as fast as the running shoes in Generation 3, but oh well. Uh, we can't have everything. Let's see. Which house is it? I think it's the house I just walked past. Yes, it is. You can do an in-game trade here. Trade a Spearow for a Farfetch'd. This is a horrible, horrible idea. Farfetch'd is absolutely mediocre for a normal flying type. You're better off with a Spearow. In fact, Farfetch'd is just so mediocre and 
lackluster, I'm not even going to bother with a bio for it. It sucks that much. Anyway, over here is Route 11. Uh, later on in the game, I'll let you listen to the whole song for this because, oh my god, this song is amazing and it's probably my favorite in the game. But I want to pop in here for a short amount of time. This is Diglett's Cave. Uh, you go down there, you'll go into a tunnel that leads all the way back to Pewter City. Uh, at this point in the game, you can't actually get back to Pewter City. I'll be traveling there later on, so I'll be showing this off. But I just want to pop in here because there are Pokemon you can catch in here that will really, 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 really help out in the next gym. Diglett and Dugtrio. Diglett is basically fast, and really only fast. Uh, its attack stat is okay, it's frail, but it's really fast, um, and really what you want it for in this gym is an immunity to electric types, because this gym is electric type. I don't need it because I have a Nidoking, and Nidoking's ground type, but if you're struggling a lot, you can walk in there and find Diglett, train it up a little bit, and sweep them. If you're especially lucky, you can run into Doug Trios at like level 30 in there or something ridiculous like that. If you survive long enough and catch one, you'll nuke this gym to all hell. It's ridiculous. But again, I'm not gonna catch it because it's gonna be pretty easy enough with uh, with my ground type already. So alright. Uh, and, and again, if you go onto Route 11, there are even more trainers you can level grind against. There's just loads of experience over here, but I don't... Do I need any? No, I won't. I'm pretty much at the level I want to be, face off against the gym. In fact, I could probably take him on now if that bush wasn't in the way. Curse you, insurmountable waist-high fence! Anyway, what you need to do to be able to progress with the game, you need to head down here to the docks. Yes, we do have the uh, SS ticket. So now we can board the SS and I'll be a little quiet. Oh, I love this song. Go ahead and give it a full listen if you can, it, on your own time. It's really nice. So, uh, I don't think this is the room I'm looking for. Is this the room I'm looking for? Yes, this is the room. Basically, this is a free healing point that you can go to. Well, all of the points are free, but anytime you need to heal when you're on the SSN, you can just come in here, talk to this lady, and rest up. I'm not sure if this is in the Generation 1 games, my friend has been playing those, and uh, he says there is no such room in those games, so I, I don't know what to tell you, just leave and come back. Like I said before, there are boatloads of trainers- <laughs> Okay, that was an accident, I didn't actually mean to say boatloads of trainers, but there are boatloads of trainers in this place. I will be fighting all of them off screen, basically, um, I think I'm just going to like fast forward and go into like chipmunk mode maybe uh, so I'm gonna do that after I basically take care of if I can see this after I take care of most of our business in here um, you want to skip all the trainers just head over here uh, and uh, head over here you'll well, I'll show you head over here oh no not this asshole again oh do you see that he said bonjour I wonder if that line was what inspired them to put that NPC in Pokemon Y who says that Professor Oak's grandson came by and like he mastered how to say bonjour but he still says smell you later. I wonder if this is where that came from. That'd be pretty interesting. 40 kinds, holy cow. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a little confession, I haven't actually been catching very many Pokemon off screen. Uh, whoops. I'm gonna need to, but uh... Uh, later, later. I'm gonna procrastinate on that. Anyway, as you can imagine, you meet him, and it's boss time. Man, he looks more arrogant than ever. And he's got Pidgeotto level 19 with the moves Tackle, Gust, Sand Attack, and Quick Attack. Uh, 
Is it the same as before? It seems to be the same as before. Just stronger, basically. I think his team is largely similar to what it was before. So let's just confusion this thing. Nice. Uh oh, not the war turtles! Mmm, I hope this is enough. I could regret this. But let's show off the Nido King. Man, his teeth are in such a weird place. It makes it kind of looks a little bit like his eyes. <laughs> anyway, his War Turtle is level 20. It knows the moves: withdraw, bite, bubble, and water gun. Uh, he could also have a Charmeleon with smoke screen, growl, ember, and metal claw. Or a Ivysaur with Tackle, Growl, Leech Seed, and Vine Whip, for some reason. I don't know why his moveset got worse. Oh well. Ah, nuts. Withdraw basically raises War Turtle's defense by one stage. If only there was a move that raised defense by one stage and lets you attack the next turn. But that would just be ridiculous. Well, there you go. That's something. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Ow. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, so I'm basically just gonna, like, dick spam this guy. There's something to be said about the limited usefulness of moves like this, but I really do like moves that hide you away for a round. I know some people are like, if you just hide away for a round, and then end up doing double damage the next round anyway, why not just attack twice, but... Well, I, I like Dragooning. Dragooning is fun. It may not be my favorite type of class. I like the mages more than anything, but Dragooning is still pretty fun. And we've got Kadabra, level 18, with the moves Teleport, Confusion, Disable, and Kinesis. This is why I was asking when Kadabra actually learns Kinesis, because... Mine doesn't have Kinesis, and it's a higher level than his. Eh, weird. I think Kinesis just lowers your speed stat. Oh crap, the spoon's bent. Oh, it's accuracy. My bad. Well, that's really suckish. Nuts. He disabled me. Well, I can't use Metal Claw now. Freaking genre savvy. Oh, quit it. Ha 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 ha! I love criticals. Alright, and last but not least is his Raticate, level 16, with the moves Tackle, Tailwind, Quick Attack, and Hyper Fang. Basically, very, very mad. Apparently capable of surviving one of my feet. Not both, just one. Yeah, having a Nido King this early in the game is kind of OP. Maybe not that OP, but it is pretty nice. A Cutmaster on board, huh? Oh, really? Yeah, well, I'll just say, tell you right now, if you want to finish off the SSN, climb up those stairs and talk to the old man, and you'll be done pretty much immediately. But I don't want to do that, because, like I said before, there are loads and loads and LOADS of trainers. And I'm gonna be taking them all on- No, 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 no. GAME! What a dick move! Did you- What a dick move! You're just standing there, right in the doorway, ready to ambush me! Wow. Well, now he's gonna get it. Man. What a, what a jerkish enemy placement. Ooh! Yes! Psybeam! It's even more powerful than Confusion. No, wait. Is it? No, I think it... Is 
it more powerful than Confusion? I like to imagine it's more powerful than Confusion. Is it more powerful than the voices of people in this dorm? Yeah, it's more powerful than Confusion. It's like five points. So, uh, let's just hit the A button, switch this with Teleport, and then switch it with Confusion. Yeah, it's basically the same move with more, 15 more power and 5 less speed. It's flat out better in every possible way. But there's nothing we can do to replace that other move. This is the door I was looking for. <sighs> but anyway, uh, basically the rest of this episode is just going to be me fighting all the trainers here, and then off screen I'm going to go back to that other route and fight the rest of them there. So, let's go high speed! Take him on! Huh, Thomas. My dad's name is Thomas. That's interesting. You get to hear me ramble on for the next however long this will take. Probably with a chipmunk voice. Oh god, can you imagine a chipmunk voice? I will, I guess. Fear Intimidate does nothing to stop me. We will be seeing Rowlet soon enough. I mean, according to my notes, I don't think I'll be running into it for a couple more episodes, but we will, we will. <laughs> Rowlet's one of those Pokemon that doesn't really benefit from the fact that it's a special and physical are determined by the type of the move, and not, like, what the move does. Like, I, I don't understand. I, I never really understood. I'm not a waiter. What do I look like, a waiter? Anyway, uh, like I was saying, I, I don't understand why they decided to do it that way, because, like, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, like, Thunder Punch, for example, is a special move. Why is Thunder Punch special? It, it's like, you're hitting the guy, right? You deck someone. It's not like a magical attack. It's a physical attack. It even counts as, like, direct contact, too, when it comes to move abilities like static and poison point, even though it's special. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if they can distinguish, like, between the two that way, why can't they distinguish between the two stats-wise? I really don't know. And like I said, they fix it in other generations, but still. It's one of the- ow. One of the things that makes coming back to this game pretty hard. That and the fact that the experience mechanics are completely different than they are in newer games. In newer games, totally made the game ridiculously easy by breaking the experience mechanics, basically. Although, I hear that the way experience shares work in X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are really similar to the way they worked in the original Pokemon games, which is kind of surprising. No, it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. Generation 1 would be the game to have broken the chance of that center. <laughs> cough, cough. The psychic type. Cough, cough. Oh, wow! I didn't know this was in here. TM31 Brick Break. Holy cow. Do, do, do I want to teach that to... Do I want to teach that to my... Duke? Where is it? Power 75. Wow. Screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just power more powerful than Double Kick, and, uh, Brick Break has this added effect where it destroys, uh, the move's Light Screen and Reflect, we haven't gotten into those yet, but basically Light Screen and Reflect, uh, temporarily boost the stats of your, like, entire team for, like, five rounds. I think it basically makes it so that, for Reflect, it's physical attacks, and for Light Screen, it's special attacks, it makes them do less damage for the next five turns against you, so, that's really, really nice. And being able to, like, punch through those is also really good, and I, I think, if the opponent has any of those cast up, um, Brick Break will, uh, do more damage than normal. Yeah. It reminds me of that one fight in Pokemon X and Y, where, um, you and your quote-unquote rival are in... What was that cave? Uh, God. The... The cave where you get the fossils. You go into that cave and you fight, uh, together a pair of Toon Flare grunts, and for some stupid reason, your quote-unquote rival... I say quote-unquote because you're not. Your quote-unquote rival uses Reflect or Light Screen or whatever on your team, even though your opponents know Brick Break, and, like, every single time they use Brick Break and they instantly KO one of the two, because Brick Break's more powerful. I get pissed off every single time, too. Because Reflect works on both Pokemon at double battles. We haven't gotten into double battles, there's not... There are a few double battles in this game, but... Huh? Looker, is that you? Maybe. I, I don't think it is, but maybe this is where they got the inspiration for it. Anyway, what was I saying? Something about Brick Break, I forget. Oh yeah, so it, they always do it that way, it always ends that way. It's always maddening, but oh well. What else is an escort gonna do? Oh, a berry in the trash. Salmon do salad. Well, what kind of fish are you eating over here? What do they eat in the Pokemon universe? 
we were in here is a chestnut berry. It's basically an awakening in berry form. In here there's a cherry berry. I think that one cures paralysis, if I remember. And in here is a petra berry. Cures poison. All right. Unfortunately, in this game, there's no way to grow berries of your own. So whatever berries you find are the berries you're stuck with. Or I guess you can't get any more berries. Oh, and in here there's a hyper potion. Weird. I thought that was in one of the rooms in the original games. I, I only remember that much because my friend's been playing the original games. He was in the SSM last night, and uh, I was watching him play through that. Huh. If only we could get enough strength to move rocks. But we can't. Not yet, anyway. Not for quite a while. Uh, is there anything in this room besides these two guys? No? Okay. Well, let's take them on. Sailors, huh? Like Sailor Moon? I don't think so. I gotta watch Sailor Moon one of these days. I gotta do a lot of things. I gotta watch Sailor Moon. I gotta watch... Not watch. I gotta play some Neko Atsume. A lot of people have been talking about Neko Atsume. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm... At the time recording this, I've been taking Japanese class. Yeah. You've been watching the weed this whole time. Ha ha! Oh, I'm just teasing. Anyway, everyone in there has been talking about either Neko Atsume or Fire Emblem Fates. But, well, I haven't played Fire Emblem Fates yet. I want to, I just can't afford it right now. Mm. It's, it, it's kind of a personal story, but it's like a really, really weird and shitty set of circumstances. Uh, basically, I've been working at this place here at my university for the past six weeks, and I haven't been paid. Ever. I don't know why. But I do know that I'm going to learn Reflect. What does that do? A wall of light that cuts... Yeah, so it cuts physical damage, basically, for five times. Um, and I'm going to teach that over teleport, because I hate teleport. Well, I don't hate it. It's just, I'm not going to use it ever. Even when I had it, I wasn't using it to return to Pokemon Center. And there's more sailors. I, I figured I'd just leave these battles in, fast forward, and talk over them, even though I, like, basically going full chipmunk, because, well, a lot of, uh, what's really fun about Pokemon is the battles, and so I thought, maybe I'd just keep in a whole string of battles like this, instead of just editing them all out and say, oh, I just cleared this dungeon off screen. And it just doesn't, just doesn't work for me. I like the battles. That's why I play RPGs like this. Oh, what? That's two times in a dungeon, man! I keep trying to enter rooms and it just run up right to my face! No, I'm always to get the reference. I like the battles to be. A nice fun challenge, not too hard. I'm pretty casual when it comes to gaming, to be honest. Like, when I play Fire Emblem Fates, yeah, I'm going on casual mode. Screw permanent death. No challenge runs for me. I don't do that. I just like to play the game for fun and amusement. Not the most challenging thing I think I've really done in a game is, uh, play Skyrim. Skyrim you done installed. Holy crap. Don't do that unless you're prepared. If you're not prepared, it'll suck, and then you'll die a lot. Hmm. Uh, I kind of like Skyrim. Part of what really, really bugs me about Skyrim is that it crashes so often. I mean, yeah, part of that's my fault for modding it. But I, I just, I don't like games that crash. <laughs> I just have problems when the game just constantly crashes on me. That's why I play Nintendo games. No, Nintendo games don't crash unless you go out of your way to glitch the hell out of them. Although there are Nintendo games really bad glitches. I feel like they're doing better about that now, but like, there's still some pretty bad glitches, especially in like, some of the older ones, like the original to this one. Uh, Final Fantasy VI, in particular, is incredibly buggy. It's kind of hilarious, like the Vanished Doom trick. <sighs> the Vanished status makes it so that no physical attacks can hit, ever. But it also makes it so that all magical attacks will always hit the target, regardless of any sort of immunity. And death is a magical attack. I can't believe they didn't see through that. That's pretty bad. I've actually been playing through Final Fantasy V. Oh, we got TM44 Rest. It puts you to sleep, but fully heals you. So, uh, yeah. And it gets- and the sleep overrides any other status ailment you might have. You can't use it when you're frozen or sleeping, though. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, recently I've been playing Final Fantasy V Advance. Just, like, between classes, basically, on my phone. Uh... Yeah, it's... It's pretty fun. The blue magic is the most ridiculous blue magic has ever been. Like, level 5 death is so, like... Ridiculous, especially since you can manipulate the enemy level so much, you can just get them down to a level multiple of five, and then level five death level. Two. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I should be grinding someone else. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I, I've been rattling off trying to think of things to talk about as I go through this dungeon. And I do oh. Okay, Igneo was a terrible choice. This, this is what you get for not paying attention to your own commentary here. Er, to the game you're commentating on. Oh uh, well. Call that a rookie mistake and done with it. Mm, I'm having traumatic flashbacks. I quite missed it. Mm. Like, I haven't been playing older Pokemon games for quite a while, so that was legitimately the hardest battle I've had in a very long time in Pokemon. I think the closest so far has been in... I've also been playing Pokemon Black 2. Um, 
and it poses that kind of having a lot of trouble using Black 2. Black 2 is pretty hard, surprisingly. Like, I think Generation 5, personally, is the second hardest generation after Generation 2. I wouldn't count Generation 1 as being hard, because Generation 1 is just so broken. Generation 2 is pretty tough. And so is Gen 5. I really do like Gen 5. If, like, I'd say it's probably my second favorite generation in Pokemon. Uh, the nostalgia factor of Gen 3 outweighs Gen 5 slightly. But it's, it's a pretty close second, to be honest. But I do like it. One of my favorite things about playing Black and White 1 is that I didn't really, like, I didn't really look much at, like, what Pokemon were going to be in the game. Like, I mean, I'd seen, like, a little bit of footage of the game and saw some Pokemon that looked pretty cool, but, like, I didn't actually know what types of Pokemon were, what moves there were, or much of anything like that. So it was kind of like playing Pokemon again for the first time, and I, I really had fun. I wish they'd do that more. Just make an entirely new set of 150 for you to get used to, play around with, learn to love. I, I, they only did that in that one game. I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad. It's especially considering how small uh, the new Pokemon in Generation 6, like the list of those was. Like, they only added 70 or so, instead of, like, over 100 like they have been. Kind of disappointing. Especially considering that a large percentage of Gen 6's Pokemon are more than a little gimmicky, let's put it that way. Not to say that all of them are bad, no, I love a lot of them. Like, during the main storyline, I found Gogo to be really fun to play with. I also really love Pangoro. Uh, one of my favorite combinations was um, a Malamar with Contrary, because I gave it um, Superpower, and Contrary is an ability. Like, that's a newer generation ability. It basically makes it so that um, any status changes are reversed on that Pokemon. And since Superpower lowers your attack and defense normally, instead it would raise Malamar's attack and defense. So, yeah, it was really nice. I can understand now why a lot of people would want Contrary on their Sephiroth. The Leaf Storm, holy cow. Ow, quit it. Oh no, not the tentacles. I hope you like seeing tentacles everywhere. Oh, that won't be for quite a while. Mm, oh well. I'll go over this one. The bio tentacle officially. The tentacle is actually one of those Pokemon that's so common you don't actually think it's good, but it is. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm not, although I'm not really the expert on what's good in like competitive level play. I never really do competitive level play. I'm more of a single player gamer myself. My friend's more of a multiplayer gamer, but me, I just like being able to play a game two, three, twelve times. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of ridiculous, but whatever. Actually, um, the numbers of times I've played Pokemon games alone are, like, ridiculously large. Like, like Fire Red and Leaf Green I've played, like, ten times or so. Uh, when Pokemon X and Y came out, I actually played them, like, eight consecutive playthroughs, basically back to back. Like, I, I don't even know what happened. Like, I played the game, and I was like, I want to play this again. So I played it again, and then I was like, I want to play it again, again. And I just kept on going. It was ridiculous, but uh, I really... Even though it didn't, they didn't have so many unique Pokemon in Generation 6, the Kalos deck was so massive that you could basically test out any combination of Pokemon you really wanted to, and I guess that's what contributed to the replay value of those games. So, yeah. Although, really, the Pokemon game I've played the most is uh, Generation 3 and its remakes combined. The number is something in the 20s. I'm not kidding. The remakes alone are about 8 to 10, and then the old versions are God knows how many. Yeah, I... I don't do that so much with most other games, like play them a ridiculous number of times, just usually when I'm like between new games and I'm like really really bored and think like, what do I want to play? And so I just pick a Pokemon and play it because it's the easiest for me to just play without thinking too hard about it, you know? Ooh, it's not to say I don't play other games. I mean, heck, uh, my username is Prince of Somnia. It tells you something about some of the other games I play. And I've actually been thinking about, like, the games I like, and I'm kind of surprised that I've never really gotten into the Kingdom Hearts series. Because, like, I love Disney movies, yeah? And I love Square Enix games. Okay, I love older Square Enix games. I should be clear about that. So you would think that, like, Kingdom Hearts would be, like, the ultimate game, or maybe not the ultimate game, a game I would really, really enjoy, but I I've never really gotten into it. Part of that's my fault, I guess, because I had played a Kingdom Hearts game, and it was 3-5... Oh, interesting. It was 3-5 made over two days, and, uh, I basically understand, Jack, <laughs> what went on in that game. Getting confused is usually not the best way to start out the series. Ah, now that I think about it, I started a lot of different things in like the middle. Like a couple of book series, I can't remember which. I started like in the middle of the series instead of like in the beginning. I don't remember the names of the book series, but that's true. That Pokemon though, Pokemon Fire Red was my first. And I guess you can call it, technically call it in the middle, but nah, not really. Did I play Pokemon games in order? No, I don't think I did. I think I played them close to in order, but not in order. I think I played uh, Sapphire after I... Ooh, Recover! 
Yeah, you should know all about Recover after the last episode. Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna get rid of this angle. I don't think I'm gonna use it. Anyway, I think I played, like, Sapphire after I played this game. Uh, and then I played Crystal. Yeah, it was Crystal. And then after that, I just completed them all in order. I seem to favor the second in the pair of games more often. Like, like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I played Silver. Uh, Fire Red's an exception. Uh, Pearl, Diamond and Pearl, I played Pearl. Black and White, I played White. Black 2 is an exception. But that's more because I like Zephyr. Uh, I just, yeah, I usually end up finding the mascot of the second game to be cooler looking than the mascot of the first game. Although, actually, nowadays, I like Dialgate. I like Pokemon. I'm exactly not like the Pokemon. I don't know why. I still think Kyogre's pretty cool looking. Oh, oh. There we go. Primal Kyogre looks pretty cool, too. Yeah, so it's entirely likely that when the holidays come around, I'll be playing Mood. That's why I said I was excited for Mood, and not Mood. Oh, not the double team. I hate the double team. I'll just say this outright right now. Double team and moves like it. Not smokescreen. Moves that boost my own evasiveness. Yeah, I'm banning them in this LP. I'm not going to use them. They're just way too cheap. Like buffs that make you resist damage, that's fair game. But like something that outright makes you essentially invulnerable, like being unable to get hit in an entire fight, no. No, that's not acceptable. It's not even acceptable in tournament play. But then again, neither is putting an entire team of Pokemon to sleep. I'm gonna try telling that to Darkrai. The ultimate violator of the sleep clause. <laughs> Oh, yeah! I didn't mention that before. We didn't have an HM yet, but now it's as good a time as any. HM moves are different from TM. Well, HMs are different from TMs. You can use uh, an HM infinitely num many number of times. You can only use a TM once. Once you use it, it's gone. And uh, most of them you can't ever get back, so you really want to choose wisely. But HMs, HMs you can use as many times as you want, because you can't leave them for the rest of the game. But you also can't delete them by learning a new move. If you want to get rid of them, you have to visit a special NPC, whose location I've forgotten over the years. But anyway, this is generally, uh, this generally leads to a practice called HM slaving. You basically dump all of your worthless HMs onto a single Pokemon that you're never actually going to use, so that your team can have moves that are actually remotely useful. And this is like dumping the more useless t uh, HMs, like Cut and Flash. There are HM moves that are actually really, really powerful, and uh, those ones, feel free to teach any Pokemon you want, because they might actually be better than most of what they can learn normally. And here we get an next attack. You use it in battle, it raises your attack by one stage. It's a consumable item. I never use X items at all. I don't think they're worth it. If you're gonna raise your own attack, you might as well use a move instead of consum consumable anyway. Or just get intimidated. Hmm, I think fire resists steel. Yeah, fire resists steel. I'm gonna have to switch out. There is a, a, a percent chance of Metal Claw raising your attack stat after you use it, but uh, apparently this entire LP I've been getting not very lucky with that. Oh well. Nice shot, nice shot. I'm actually somewhat running out of things to rattle on about, to be honest. Mm, kind of oh yeah, uh, Dig, you can also use it as a field move. It, it basically works as an escape rope. So anytime you can use an escape rope, I think you just use Dig to get out of there instead. And uh, field moves, they don't consume any PP or anything like that. It's not like the Golden Sun series where you consume your magic points. So actually, I think they call it PP there too. Yeah, you don't consume anything like that when you use a field move, which is really nice. Well, I'll get to the Golden Sun series soon enough. I do love the Golden Sun series. Is there like uh, any other RPG that was like natively released for the Game Boy Advance other than Golden Sun? I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. But anyway, uh, it seems that we've uh, run out of traitors to fight. But no one. But no one can. No, no, I'm just kidding. So uh, let's head over here. The captain is seasick. Really? How can a captain get seasick? Oh, gross. <laughs> a terrible captain. Hmm, I guess he didn't hit him the back rug else. Oh, well that's a nice beard he's got. So, I, I, I guess I can forgive his seasickness for a beard that nice, or a mustache, or whatever. So now we get HMO1 and we can cut things! 
Fool, I'm a HMO one you. I've been waiting to make that joke for a very long time. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we need HM01 to basically do anything after this point in the game. So let's head over here. Yeah, you see, there's no uh, number of HM01s you have in your inventory. That's because you have infinite uses out of it. So uh, let's teach it to Shroom. This is basically why I have Shroom in my party. Cut and Flash. So now that you have Cut, you can actually go all the way through Diglett's Cave and go to Pewter City. Uh, there's a bush outside the Pewter City exit, you can cut it down and you'll return to Pewter City. There's something we can actually do over there, but uh, I don't want to do that quite yet. I want to finish off my business here in Vermilion City. But once you talk to the captain, you leave the SSN, it's gone, and you can never go back. So I hope you got the TM for Brick Break, otherwise it's lost forever. What a pretty effect. I love the graphics of this game. Give me a game with pretty looking pixels, I'm happy. I don't need HD graphics to annoy myself. Well, but that's, I guess that's just because I'm a fan of games as old, if not older, than myself. Like, a lot of the Super Nintendo era games. I guess I'm kind of weird like that. So anyway, to get to the gym, at this point in the game, you need to use Cut on this bush. Later on, you can... Well, nah, nah, I won't spoil it. But can we take on the Lightning American? We'll just have to find out next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. See you guys then.